Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of PHT. I think this is the fight night that you guys have all been waiting for. Tonight we are going to put the K-Horns up against the Jubilees. So, the flagship and the would-be flagship that never really came to the consumer market, essentially. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so We're, we're kind of sitting in front of a pair of speakers set up for the home market, so it's hard to say that. <laughs> to a degree, yeah. So, the... The Never officially set up for the home market, right? Correct. So they uh, essentially what we're looking at is we did have to do some modifications. So every other test we've been doing a fair A-B comparison with a switcher. With the Jubilees needing to be run through a DSP, uh, it's a little more difficult to do that. So we are actually running very similar power. Um, we are running the K-Horns through the DSP as well, and we are manually switching through the computer. That's why Trey's got the laptop over here. Yeah, so basically I'm, I'm muting the Jubilees and playing, unmuting the K-Horns and vice versa when we swap. So it's not an extremely clean sw switch swap change it doesn't happen extremely fast and we we can get it we've got it down to a switch is maybe two three seconds something yeah, like that it's longer so it's than still... you have audio memory <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's the best we can do in the situation in the situation so we can still tell you how awesome both of these sets sound now by doing it this way we have the preamp section completely the same in both setups the only real difference between the two setups is we're using two amplifiers to drive the Jubilees, where we're only using one amplifier to drive the, the K-Horns. Uh, and that's simply because it's actively bi-amped on the Jubilee and we're just a standard pair of speakers, uh, speaker and an amp connection on the K-Horns. And as you can see from the, the behind, behind us shot, we're using my laptop as the source. So when you do see me pick up my phone over here, I am not streaming to the speakers. I am controlling my laptop over there with the phone so that we don't have to actually get up and move around and so forth. So I don't want you guys to think that just because I have my phone in my hand that this is a Bluetooth connection. You're using the phone as a remote control. Exactly, exactly. So we are still hardwired directly into the computer, so we're getting full, full resolution, high quality, high quality sound. So as we said in the past, we are using cuts that we have used previously, and these are local artists. We're going to post links below to every single again, as we've done in the past, to every single artist we play today, so that not only can you listen along with us, but you can like and share with your friends and just check out these awesome new artists. Show some of those artists some love. Exactly. I might even, uh, I might build a playlist that I can share with everybody, a PHT playlist, so you guys can check it out. Like a Spotify or something? Yeah, Spotify playlist. Let's do two kinds of pie. Okay. I hear a lot of low end frequencies in this. Can we change it over to the Jubilees and see what we're what we're comparing here? Sure, but because it changes so slow, let's start the song over as we do. All right, so now we're on the Jubilees. Let's start that song over. It's like a different song. What's your take on that so far? Hearing some really wide soundstage. I mean, oh, the yeah. guitars are bouncing pretty wide in their in their primary notes. It's very open. It definitely, like I was saying right right off, it's a completely different sound. As soon as you switch over, it was like it was like a different track. That whole that LF cabinet is is a lot different in its response from the Jubilee to the K-Horn. Typically what we do in these scenarios, you've seen us go A, B, A, B. So it's kind of a fair comparison as one's not wider than the other. But with the with the K-Horns, that gives us an unfair advantage to the Jubilees because one would be out of the corner. So it wouldn't be receiving as much of the corner horn low end as it needs. Kind of have to do this. The, the giving grace here is that the horn on that Jubilee is extremely large mm -hmm. and it gives you a really wide berth yeah. So we've got a wide center stage, and uh, it, and it sounds in both speakers like they're dead center 
imaged. Yeah, it's so imaging is imaging is perfect on both of these guys. Um, the low frequency, I feel like, is where this guy where the Jubilee stands oh, yeah. out. Oh yeah. Well, that's that's kind of what Paul said. You know, he was going to make a second K horn. Uh, you know, the next version of the K horn, he made the Jubilee and said, "This is a full step up." <laughs> you know, so we're not going to call this a K horn. We have to call it something else. Yeah. You know, you you you, ex you think you know what to expect when you hear a K horn, and you flip over to the Jubilee, and you're surprised because you don't expect to hear that next level of low end. That exactly. next level of didn't know it got any lower. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know there was that much fullness down there. Do you want to try one of our other artists? Yeah, let's let's uh, swap over to a country track. We haven't really listened to a country track. We've got Seth. And, uh, and uh, Mark, both were country artists that we could use. All right. Let's start off with Seth Jones. So this song is called Lonely, Lonely Self by Seth Jones. You're in the mandolin way over here. Stereo guitar, but the mandolin by itself on my Drums come in right dead center where you expect. It's a good recording. The mix is real good. Up that is uh, by Matt Watley. Matt Watley in uh, Come Over Recording Studios. Almost a perfect mix too. You can hear every instrument, nothing too overpowering. He's not way too forward. I've heard a couple of songs a little muddy in the mid-range on the or the up, lower mid-range on the Jubilee. And, and I think it's the room that we're in at higher volumes is starting to do that. He hadn't treated the room yet. Mm -hmm. But uh let's swap over to the style, I mean the K-horn. Let's start over. So one of the things I really like to do is, like you were mentioning, you could hear the the mandolin sounded like it was coming from the K-horn. It is. <laughs> so. I had to look over to make sure I muted it. <laughs> that is that. That is what that ultra wide horn gives you. It's that. well, it's it's not just the big coverage of the horn. It's the way these speakers react in a room. I mean, their coverage pattern is extremely wide, uh, and and full. There's not a lot of dead spot in their coverage pattern. Uh, let's let's. Do him on the K-horns. This is the K-horns. Now that mandolin is in the K-horns. I can't believe that I did this to me. You know what? You can hear the difference in height between the Jubilee and the K-horn. He has actually moved down vertically in the, his vocals are a little lower in the, in the mix now. You hear what I'm talking about? Yes. And, and it could have to do with us almost sitting on the floor on this couch. Well, that and the, the mid-range on the K-horn versus the middle of the horn here, you're a foot different, foot and a half. You can hear that vertical difference. I was noticing it more in the hi-hat sounds higher. H taller. Not frequency higher, but yeah, physically taller. <laughs> physically taller. And it almost seems like if I were picturing it, I'd say it was right here behind him, or right here behind him because he'd be on stage yeah. right. <laughs> the fiddle's definitely right there. You know? Mandolins over here. Drums. Drums are behind him to the right. Bass players to the left. <laughs> So I'd love to see a stage just to see if he's set up that way because it sounds that well, they're way. They're probably all recorded individually, <laughs> and it's just it's, yeah, that's the master. Yeah, we, but we should ask Matt about that kind of. That might be fun. Yeah, you talking about how we had Jim call in that time with the K horns? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can reach out to some of the recording artists or the engineers that did this music and talk about it a little bit. We could have him take a picture of how they actually are. We're gonna try and guess where everything is. <laughs> see how good his mix. See was. how good it was. Yeah. So. 
what we're talking about is essentially we are designing a stage and imagining it's there because with how accurate these speakers are, you can pick out exact locations, whether it be forward, backward, left, right, you can tell the difference between every instrument. You can tell where each of the components lie just coming from the speakers. Yeah, and if they weren't set up that way, props to the engineer. It sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing that, uh, yeah, he was. it was just the engineer that put them all together because typically when you get into the studio, everybody's doing it piece by piece. They're not recording all together. You know, a, a snippet about this, we, we haven't talked much about it before. Uh, I don't know that, I, I don't remember that I have, but the engineer that did this recording is named Matt Watley. Mm -hmm. And Matt in 2000, early 2000 or late 99, came to work for Klipsch hmm. in the techno support department and, and as, a, uh, as my second in customer service or uh, tech support. Hmm. So he actually joined me in tech support and worked for a little while and moved to, from Hope, Arkansas up to uh, Indianapolis when engineering moved up there. And he stayed with us in customer service for quite a, quite a while. He, even, he stayed in tech support after I left and went back to the engineering department. But so a lot of these guys have their own ties to clips. They do. <laughs> so. and, and, and honestly, that's how I was able to do this. I reached out to people that I've worked with over the years through clips and said, hey, we're doing this. Would you want to have some people involved? And, and uh, Matt was eager. And it sounds like the artists were eager to, to let us use their, gear, their, their, their music. And uh, we, we greatly appreciate it. Yeah, it's been, it's been awesome. And we love having you guys be able to hear what we hear. It's much better than dubbing over some royalty-free track that may or may not sound close. <laughs> so, You want to go into some metal? Sure, let's do so, something crazy. This one's not on Spotify, so I can't control it from my phone. I'm going to get up and get us started from up there. So the artist is Dracon, and the song is The Value of All. On this cut, the Jubilees seem to put the guitars in the back a little bit and bring the bass and drum forward because of that, because of that bottom end bump. So that was Dracon. Again, they have a new album release coming out in 2021. So make sure you check them out, like and subscribe to all their, all their stuff. They sound pretty great. Pretty so. well recorded. I like the music. Um, as far as the speakers go, the there's a lot of people that look at Heritage product and go, oh, that's a classical speaker. Clearly. <laughs> the metal sounded pretty damn good, you know? <laughs> yeah, and that's what I, I woke up this morning was listening to some metal when, <laughs> when we were doing some other recordings. So that's, it's an everything speaker. <laughs> you know, I've, I've said that to everybody. Mm -hmm. If the speaker is articulate and is a, uh, a high fidelity unit, it's gonna be high fidelity if the source is high fidelity. It doesn't matter whether it's jazz or classical or, or heavy metal. 
you know, reggae, it doesn't matter. As long as it's good and clean, it's going to come out good and clean. How do you feel about some pop punk? Oh, cool. So, I didn't listen to anything um, like that yet. Now, this is kind of, uh, it's a very early on recording, and it's a uh, not the best recording. It's a garage recording, basically, yeah. right? And these guys were awesome live. Uh, they This band broke up. There's a band called Distill. They broke up. Not really broke up. It's one of the band members just decided to move, move away, and they just kind of slowly stopped doing shows. But um, essentially what this this is is a band that plays amazingly live not the best recording but you can still hear the awesome instrumentals and everything that still shines through even even through that cool you got some of that distill distill everything by distill I was having trouble hearing the vocals in the, since there was so much pushing on the low frequencies. The drums, the snare sounds a little more where it should be in some reason. Yeah. This is the lower. That one brings a lot of uh, a lot of memories back for me. You guys maybe mentioned it, or uh, when we talked about who the hell are you kind of deals. Right. I talked about how I early on started doing music videos, and that was one of the bands that I made a music video for. 10, 12. It's been longer than that. 10 to 12. Oh, yeah. 15, 16 years yeah. ago now uh, was when I started making videos, and that was one of the bands that I created music videos for. I first heard these guys around 2011. Yeah, I was trying to think about it. It was before my wife and I got married, and that was 10 years ago. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, wow. I'm old. I, I, I don't realize <laughs> that I'm getting old. I've got t-shirts older than you, boy. So let's go to something else. Right, what else do we have? Let's, uh, um, let's do some Matt Summers cuts. Yeah, that's a, kind of a new age... Uh, uh, kind of grungy, kind of, uh, yeah, a little all over the place. So We're going to start on the K-Horns? This is Matt Summers, audience of one. And as always, links are going to be in the description so you guys can check this stuff out. Matt plays all the instruments on this whole album. I wanted to use some of the earlier ones where he's singing too. He sounds like the eels. He'll appreciate that, but he won't want to do it. <laughs> comes to mind is the cleanliness of the recording. Super clean. When they stop playing, you don't hear distortion, you hear nothing. <laughs> you can hear the air in the background, you can hear everything. Here you touch the string. Yeah. <laughs> Do -do -do. 
get in it. I like that. Drums are definitely over here. <laughs> Let's go to the jube, see what the bottom end does. You're getting quicker. It adds to the grunge feel when we switch over to the jubes. Yeah. The guitar sounds like it might be from the 90s. <laughs> yeah, and pauses. And pauses. I think that about wraps us. We had a pretty well-rounded uh, listening experience, and these guys are awesome. Yeah, the uh, blow you away. the The difference between the K horn and the Jubilee is is night and day in the capabilities of the product. The Jubilee tends to have better bottom end mm -hmm. and uh, and better top end than the K horn. Uh, but that was the whole point. Mm -hmm. Paul was looking to make a new K horn and outdid himself <laughs> <laughs> and that's the Jubilee. <laughs> that's it. Just called it Jubilee and moved on. Yeah. Um, so the uh, the I look forward to hearing the new ones when they come out. Too. Yeah, me too. I want to. I want to hear them. Wouldn't mind hear them in the same exact location as these, just yeah. to see if it turns we'll put out. Put those the side same. by side. <laughs> but uh, the interesting thing about the Clipshorn versus the Jubilee is not how different they are, but how similar they are. They have so much of the same DNA. They're so uh, dynamic, so capable in the dynamics. They're so uh, big in their sound. This imaging is so perfect on both of them. I mean, it's dialed very well once you get the speakers set properly. And uh, so a lot of it comes down to fit and finish. If somebody was trying to make a decision, do I spend the money on K-Horn or do I spend the money on Jubilee? Which one fits your room? Oh yeah. That's what it comes down to a lot of speakers. Is it what, does. What fits your personality, what fits your listening experience, and what fits the environment you're putting them in. Some of it comes down to aesthetics. Mm -hmm. You know, really does. And but if, if aesthetics are out the window and you just want the biggest, baddest mofo speaker you can get your hands on, Jubilee's your guy. Oh yeah. You want something a little bit more elegant, something that fits a little bit more into more spaces that a has bit a better wife acceptance factor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Paul ever envisioned the K-Horn having a better wife acceptance factor well, than Paul one of was, his other speakers. <laughs> Paul was function first. True. <laughs> Always function first. True. Uh, and if we can make it look pretty, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, looking directly at them now, there's not a chance in hell that my wife would let me put that in any, <laughs> any room in her house. <laughs> she <laughs> might agree to the K-Horn around her, around her piano. Yes. She would say no looking at them, but as soon as she heard them, she might, might change her mind. mind so. And right. same with the Jubilee, if you put it in the... In the in no, the, uh, I, don't, I don't, don't think so. Think so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm trying, brother. Yeah, it's just, it's not even worth it. <laughs> Anyways, all right, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, tell us where you want this channel to go. We're going to do some more Q&As. We're going to do... Um, pretty much whatever you guys want. It's uh, as we said in the intro video to this whole channel, whatever you want, that's what we're gonna provide for you, so. One of the things we've talked about it is uh, possibly doing some tech videos, some sh shorter, uh, you know, one minute, two minute tech videos of how you do things or why you would do things or, or uh, you know, how you would go about accomplishing a task. So you know, some of those might be helpful for some of the DIY guys out there. For sure. Let us know what you want to see. Make sure you like and subscribe to see future videos. And comment below to tell us exactly what you'd want to see. What would you be interested in? So till next week, I'm Jason. And I'm Trey. We'll see you next time. So, when you see me pick up... <laughs> Oops. Oh, you're dragging... Ah, there it goes again. <laughs> I, I thought I had it in my pocket. I can test that. Trying to get levels, you d Give me some real, <laughs> real talking. I will talk.
talk like all big, all law, all small, quiet, big towel, hi, hip, uh, audio. Just open with him throat singing. Hey, give me some labels. Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to the neighborhood. Here, give me some. Hey, uh, regular me? Me? No, no. Me. Hello. It's, hello. Hello. Hi there. Hi. That sounds good. What are we going to do today, Trey? We're going to do something. 